Hey, welcome back to the House Q channel. I am Jareen Makia, full-time employee, part-time real estate investor. And I just wanted to take a second to reflect over the last five years of my life when it comes to real estate. Since we're in this new decade now, I just wanted to show people um, you know, how I was able to go from zero dollars and very little experience to owning a million dollar real estate portfolio within a five year span. And I didn't uh, inherit a bunch of money. I didn't uh, come across a lottery ticket that happened to help me along my way. I just did it with some tried and true methods and I wanna walk you through some of those. So uh, we'll touch on things like uh, leveraging FHA loans, using only multifamily uh, properties, appreciating markets so that the home value can continue to rise and working with partners if the deal's too big for you. So stay tuned, I would love to walk you through my progression. So how was I able to build a million dollar portfolio between the age of 26 and 31? Well, let me first get a few things out of the way. So I was a financial analyst at the time. I was at the bottom of the totem pole and I did not work in an environment that looked like this. By no means was I making million dollar trades on the stock market or you know doing some really high leverage stuff on Wall Street. My office looked more like the office where you know I was stuck in a cubicle, um, trying to stay awake all day, and I knew there had to be a better way. So I started off with FHA loans. I talked about this in my previous video, but to expand further, FHA loans are government-backed loans that allow you to put down a really low down payment uh, as long as you live in one of the units. They actually let you get these types of loans if your credit score is a 580. So it's not a vehicle that you know is used by really, really rich people. It's something that you can use to get started and it'll catapult you into the place you wanna be. So for me, I started with a $350,000 property in Newark, New Jersey. And because of this FHA loan, I only had to put down $12,000. This is huge for me because I did not have the 25% that most investment properties take. So with a loan amount of a little under $338,000, I was rocking and rolling. Now, one other thing I want to note is all of the properties I invested are multifamily properties that cash flow. And this is super important because if you have a property that has several tenants, then you have way more opportunities to you know, absorb any hits if one of the tenant leaves versus a single family home uh, where if they leave, then you owe 100% of the mortgage payment. So to walk you through the numbers, I was making $3,750 in rent each month. And this was in 2015. Now the expenses, which I'll touch on in the future and I've touched on in some past videos, the expenses were $2,750. So it left me with almost a thousand bucks a month in cash flow. And this is the key to multifamily properties because if you get a small multifamily, then you can live in one unit, essentially pay yourself the rent, or you can stay there for a short period of time, move out and then rent the unit and you'd be making that same money without even actually living in the building. So that's why I wanted to invest in multifamily properties. And if you notice, this is my financial picture in 2015. Now, after saving a thousand bucks a month or accumulating a thousand bucks a month in rental income over the next four years, this was my financial picture. And I was much more happy. Right. So that's why you want to invest in cash flowing properties so that over the course of the time frame, you're not only looking at appreciation, which is the home price increasing in value, but you're looking at collecting cash every single month, which is making you richer. So that brings me to my next point, appreciating markets. Um, this is a little bit harder for some people than others. But for me, I was living in the New York area and the beautiful thing about that area is it was appreciating much faster than the average appreciation rate. So on average, homes appreciate between three and 5% a year. And that's a beautiful thing because that's making your net worth grow over time. Well, my property actually increased 
an average of 5.5% each year. And what that did for me was exponentially increase my net worth. So in 2015, if my home was worth 350, after those four years of appreciation, now it's worth 410. And the beautiful part about that is that my appreciation in my home was growing, but the tenants were paying off my mortgage for me. So over time, this magical word called equity was increasing. Now I wanna pause right there and explain what equity is. Equity for lack of all these complex terms is just the home value on the market minus the home debt or the mortgage that you owe on it. So if you can get that calculation straight, then you'll be able to kind of project out how much your home is valued and how much you can make from that house. So I'll break down the numbers at a high level and hopefully this makes sense. If in 2015, I was making $350,000 um, on my home, if I were to sell it. And in 2019, if I were to sell my home, it would be worth $410,000. And that means the gap in home value of $60,000 has all been added to my net worth. Now, the loan, which is the original loan when I signed for ownership of the property, is still going to be $3,000. $338,000. And if you look at that payoff amount, I paid the original 12K in my down payment and the tenants actually paid an additional 20 plus thousand dollars over the course of four years so that my actual debt owed on the house dropped from 338 to 317. And when we talk about equity, Back to that formula that says home value minus home debt leaves me with an equity position or the amount of ownership stake I have in this property of $93,000 as of 2019. Now, this is key because the FHA loans will only be valid if you live in the unit. And even if you move out, you can only have one FHA loan at a time. So if I wanted to buy a second property and I already have an FHA loan, I couldn't do it using such a low down payment. And if I wanted to buy a $400,000 property outright using a conventional loan, it's going to cost me at least a hundred grand. So the fact that now that I've got all this equity baked into the property allowed me to do something really cool, which is refinance my first home, change the terms, from an FHA loan to a conventional loan. And now I can use that FHA loan again on my next property. That's what I did. So I know that that got complicated, but just to simplify it, in 2015, my first house was worth $350,000. In 2019, that house was worth $410,000. Because the house increased in value so much, and because the tenants paid my tenant down, so my uh, mortgage down so much, I achieved 20% equity in the property, which then allowed me to change the loan terms into a conventional loan. And because I was freed up, then I could go move into a brand new property with an FHA loan, only paying $16,000 and acquire another property worth 450,000. Now, where did I get the 16,000 from? From the cash flow that I had been saving up over the last four years. So it's a, a never ending cycle if you do this right, where you take one property, refinance it once you've got enough equity and then invest that difference into a new property. So that brings me to my last stage, which is partnerships. I won't spend long on this, but I just want to help you understand that although I was doing this on my own with the two units that I did buy, the partnerships that I worked on on the side uh, allowed me to take small positions in other people's real estate deals. That means I might work with a group of three people 
who are buying a property and I only have to put a small portion of the cash down. I might have to use, you know, some of my sweat equity or, you know, manage a relationship. But because I'm involved in these different groups, that means that I own a stake in all of these other properties. And if I combine the amount owned in some of these other properties, it's well over 200,000 as well. So that's how I got to a million dollar portfolio. But I want you to keep in mind that I never invested more than $20,000 in any one deal at any one time. And that's the beautiful part about real estate is even if you don't have a ton of money, you can build your wealth exponentially. Guys, if you're looking for a way to calculate deals, if you want to understand how to analyze and know what price to offer for deals, visit us at housequeue.com and download the housequeue app. It's been a pleasure and I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks.